Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God ranking video. This one should look familiar to a lot of you. Today I'll be looking at all 15 classes and placing them from my least to most favorite. A topic that I covered almost a year ago now. However, since then, things have changed. Not only has a year's time changed the order of things, but we were also given an entirely new class to add to our roster, the Samurai. And it just doesn't feel right to leave it without including him. Plus, I kind of threw together that list trying to take into account how often I played the class, as well as how much I enjoyed to play it, and how useful it was overall, and I felt like those specifics got too trivial by the end of it. So I've decided to simplify it and make it a lot more personal, meaning I'll be ranking these classes based on how often I play them. Because if I play them a lot, then chances are they're probably pretty fun to play too, and most likely have a lot of utility to back them up. All right then, let's get into it. Kicking things off at number 15, we have the Mystic. To reiterate from last year, my opinion still stands that there is not a single class in Realm of the Mad God that I fully dislike. I think that when it comes down to it, all of them have the capabilities to be excellent when put into the right hands. Some lend themselves to a more potent playstyle more than others, but I really don't have any major problems with any of them. I think that they're all Good. The Mystic just so happens to be the class that I play the least. It's a standard long-range character, staff, robe, decent DPS at max, and the orb ability allows you to temporarily put enemies within a stasis, pausing them, so to speak. Meaning if you have a bunch of enemies in front of you and you want to put one of the groups on hold to focus on the other, you can. It's a very strategic style ability, especially when rushing. I find it really helpful. However, I will admit that the orb does feel a bit too strategic for what realm is. I really don't find much of a necessity in my playstyle to put certain enemies out of commission only to have to fight them later when they reanimate. A lot of the times I'll find myself pointing off to the side of enemies, so that way they won't be stasis, meaning I can still attack them, and they'll be inflicted by the curse status effect. And you will get a berserk bonus, which is pretty sweet, but at that point, I don't really feel like I'm playing the mystic for the mystic. And that's most likely why I don't play it as much as all of the other ones. But again, with the right player, I think it can be excellent. It's just not my thing. Number 14, the Assassin. Our first dagger class of the bunch, maxing at a high 75 speed and dexterity, allowing you to run in and run out very quickly, deal damage, pretty significant damage at that. But the ability, like the Mystic, is sort of strategic in a way. You can throw a series of poisons into the air before landing on the ground and splashing across to affect multiple enemies, who will then be damaged over a period of time. What's cool is that these poisons can be thrown over walls and if timed correctly, can even damage enemies when invulnerable. For the longest time, he was considered the king of the wine cellar, because all he had to do was run up, throw poisons, run out, and not do anything else. Since then, however, things have changed. Soulbound thresholds have been pretty balanced across the board, so getting damage really isn't that big of a deal anymore, meaning that the assassin also kind of lost his trademark habitat. He's still fast, he's still got good damage, and a unique ability, but like the mystic, I find that it's a bit too strategic for what realm is. It has charm and some merit, but not enough to really make me want to play it all the time. Aside from those few spots, he doesn't really have an edge over any of the other classes, and that's what I feel ultimately holds him back for me. Number 13, the Rogue. I've said it many times before and it bears repeating, when under the right circumstances, the Rogue can be one of the most lucrative characters to play in the whole game. With the right mana control, you can almost go permanently invisible and rush any dungeon. And since enemies can't detect you while you're invisible, you basically rule over every dungeon in the game. However, that is really the only time that I play the Rogue if I'm by myself. Even then, there is only a small handful of dungeons that I really need a rogue for. But more often than not, I usually don't have to rush at all because someone else does it for me. So while it is an excellent class and I do play it more than Mystic and Assassin, it's not a class I prefer to farm with. Number 12 the Samurai. The newcomer who received quite the lashing when he was released. Some people love him, others hate him. And what are you gonna do? I know everyone's already said it, but he really is one of the most balanced and middle-of-the-road characters in the game. He doesn't really excel at anything, but he's pretty well-rounded in terms of his attributes. He uses a katana, so he doesn't have short melee range, but it's not a dagger either. He uses heavy armor, but still only maxes at 25. The wakizashi can pierce as well and has pretty good damage, but it has a short-ranged fixed area of effect. It does expose enemies, lowering their defenses by 20, which is great for groups, but his base DPS is not bad, 50 attack, 50 dex. I played the samurai a decent amount whenever he came out, just so that I could figure out how he worked and see if I liked him. And while he is the definition of a solid class, I think what keeps me from loving him is his unremarkable nature. It's a hard thing to explain, I don't quite understand it myself, but fact of the matter is, I play him a healthy deal, but not quite as much as the rest. Number 11, 
the Huntress. Probably the one class to move around the most compared to my last list. She was all the way at the bottom before, and my main argument for that was because she's a copycat archer only with an ability that I prefer less, but I realize that has since changed quite a bit, mainly because I realized, oh hey, I actually don't play a lot of these other classes more. That being said, while she bears a striking resemblance to the archer, that is mostly a good thing. High 75 attack, access to bows, which means doom bow, and really any of the UT bows, they're all pretty excellent. What separates her from the archer, though, is that her trap ability Ability, like the Assassin's Poison, is something that you throw in the air and plant on the ground, and all enemies that walk within that area will set off the trap, and they'll be damaged and given a status effect. Not bad. It's good to throw over a bunch of enemies to trap them all at once. But again, I feel like that whole action of throwing a trap into the air, waiting for it to land, I know it's not a very long duration, but it sort of bogs down the pace just a little bit for me. It's not that it feels super clunky or anything, but it's not instantaneous like a lot of other abilities are. I'm just a little bit impatient whenever it comes to the throwing animation. Number 10 the Priest. If there is ever a class to be labeled as support in Realm of the Mad God, this is it. Longest range in the game, but also some of the lowest defense and damage in exchange for a delightful healing party effect, instantly restoring a large amount of health to everyone around you. Not only is it great for the group around you, but if you want to have a more powerful priest with something like Wand of the Fallen, you can experiment with some different item alternatives here and have a pretty decked out priest. Now, you shouldn't have to rely on UTs to make a class super fun, but they shouldn't be taken out of the equation entirely either. Tell of Holy Protection is so much fun to use because it allows the priest to actually be a pretty good rusher and tank, and the Tome of Purification is arguably more helpful than a standard tome, especially in some of the higher level areas. I would say that his low damage is what holds him back, but again, Decca sort of balanced out the Soulbound threshold, so competing for loot isn't really a problem now. It would really just be if your low DPS was holding back the group from killing something quickly, which is admittedly an issue. Number 9. The Trickster. Probably the only class I could describe as Wily? That seems appropriate. Our third and final dagger class with higher DPS than the previous two, but its ability is by far the most unique of honestly any other class, the Prism's teleportation ability. And when that happens, a decoy of yourself will be sent to go off in a different direction, allowing you to not only distract enemies, but also get around the map and different areas really quickly. The Sprite World is the most common example because there are no walls, so you can just teleport to different areas and get to the boss in a flash. Movement is the name of the game when it comes to the Trickster, and it can be really fun. He's not much of a team player aside from a couple distractions, but I think he's a really fun time when you just want to mess around. It's a she, right. Yes, got it. Number 8 the Sorcerer. Similar to my thoughts on the Samurai, I actually think that the Sorcerer is one of the most balanced classes in the game. Not in the same sense that he pulls attributes from all of the other classes, but because he's not broken, but still has a purpose. He has the long range wand like a priest, high vitality like melees, but still has the low defense of a robe, decent damage at 60, higher than average speed just to give him a slight edge on the playing field, and the glorious scepter ability, which shoots out a bolt of lightning that automatically homes in on a set number of targets. And the higher your wisdom, the more damage and number of targets you can hit. So if you want to sacrifice, say, defensive traits for more mana and wisdom, and couple that with like a scepter of devastation if you have one, you can be doing outrageous amounts of damage. I really like the Sorcerer. He's a fun time. I really don't have like a complaint about him. There's, no, there's not really anything where I'm like, yeah, that, that could have been tweaked or this is kind of slow. He's good and balanced. That's what he is. Number seven, the Necromancer. It's kind of like a similar relationship between the Archer and the Huntress. Wizard and Necro are also very similar. Similar DPS, but the Necro does lack a little bit more, especially in the ability department. Lower vitality, but higher wisdom because the skull takes health away from enemies within a radius and gives it to you and your allies. Blinking red and about to die, hit that space bar and you can be back up to full. Something about taking it away from the enemy as opposed to the priest just healing automatically feels cathartic and more satisfying in a way. This is definitely a class I like to load up anytime I'm looking for a chill farming day. Number six, the knight. If you ever want to win Realm of the Mad God, just play the knight. Yeah, he's a little hard at the beginning, especially when unmaxed, but when you get this baby rolling, he easily becomes one of the most broken classes in the game. The highest max defense of any character at 40, in addition to your heavy armor and shield giving you more, the shield itself, which can stun enemies, removing their ability to attack you, which means you can keep stunning them and essentially never get touched. Yeah, most endgame bosses and enemies are being made stun immune so that way you can't do this, but that doesn't change the fact that the rest of the game can be devoured. It can get boring after a while, I will admit, when you have all this power, all this tankiness, but he gets the job done, and when you want to steamroll your way through some dungeons, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better class to do it with. Number 5. 
the warrior. Warrior is a class that I know is so powerful that I often completely overlook it to play the other classes and give them some appreciation. But let me tell you, when you have a Helm of the Juggernaut, you really have no reason not to play this class. Even without the Jug, though, it is exquisite. Some of the highest DPS in the game, Swords are high damaging, 75 attack is really high, Berserk increases your rate of fire, and you get Speedy from your default Helm to run in and out of situations, plus you have melee tankiness? Yeah. You can see why he would be so useful everywhere. Assuming you aren't selfish with your buffs, he's a great party class to bring. Really, the only part that would get stale about him is how effective he really is. But that's a hypothetical scenario. If you play any of these classes for a prolonged period of time, you're gonna get sick of him eventually. Number four, the ninja. Trust me, I was tempted to put this at number one just because he's my boy, he's my mascot. But if I'm gonna be faithful to my own rules, I gotta be honest, I don't play him as much as the next three. I think the ninja's really fun. Some people don't like him. A lot of people don't like him. Like the samurai, he was the first class to use a katana. It pierces, but it's got pretty low range. However, you have 70 attack and dexterity this time around. And it's also the only class to have a passive ability of sorts, where you hold down spacebar and it consumes mana per second, granting you a speedy bonus as long as you're holding it down. This makes traversing through areas so much faster. Yes, you do have leather armor so you can run into danger, but when you get the bearings and play the class for as long as I have, that rarely becomes an issue. He's especially good for eventing in that regard. Godland's capabilities isn't the greatest, and he is very much a glass cannon, so he can't rush too well. But the high concentrated damage of the shuriken at long range is great for boss fights. Now that I have a Ray Katana and a Doku, I have a little bit of extra range to make him more capable. And he's a ninja. It's just cool. I like it. Number three, the Paladin. Originally my number one pick, this may come as a surprise to now see at number three. And while he was my oldest and most prized character for a very long time before he died, I'll be honest, I have been evenly dispersing my time across the other melees. I don't play the Paladin quite as exclusively as I once did. He's a really good class. A party effect of healing, increasing your maximum HP, a damaging effect to everyone around you. The Paladin excels in both a team and solo scenario. I really don't have a problem with him. Number two. The Wizard. Known for being an extraordinary character all around, if this was the only class you ever wanted to play, because it is right smack dab in the middle, you would be perfectly fine for the rest of your game career. Long range at 8.6, very high damage, 75 attack and dexterity, plus an ability that is concentrated magic on your cursor. You can point directly over to an enemy's hitbox, and if you time it right, all of your shots will land at that point and deal extraordinary damage. But even if you miss, it'll still collide with other enemies around it. He's a great Godlands farming character, he's excellent on bosses, he doesn't have a team party effect, and he's definitely not a rusher. But when you can kill things this quickly, I don't really mind. And number one, the Archer. While it may have been a hard decision before, it's become quite clear to me that the Archer is easily my favorite class to play. Not only is he currently my oldest character with the highest amount of fame, but he is always at the top of my character select screen. Whether it's me going out farming some dungeons, popping some keys, joining in someone else's chain in the Nexus, doing endgame stuff, early game stuff. No, he can't rush. He's a ranged character. He's not supposed to. But the bows, while not having the longest range, keep you at a good safe distance while dealing out some serious damage. First of all, most of them can pierce. While I know that my opinion on a class shouldn't be solely based in its UTs, the Archer is the one exception where I can sort of let that slide, because it is very rare when you don't play this class without at least a Doom Bow. In my case, I'm lucky enough to have Leaf Bows and Thousand Shots in reserve, but these powerhouse items just define the Archer. And even then, it's only half of the equation. We still have the Quiver, a fairly quick straight shot that pierces and paralyzes all enemies that are hit by it. Lower tiers can slow, which is good for the enemies that can't be paralyzed. And in my case, if you have the Quiver of Thunder, you can even daze certain bosses. Leather armor gives you a bit more defense than, say, a robed class, and throwing on rings that give you attack to complement this damage is quite nice. Again, when it comes down to it, this is the class that I play all the time. I love the damage, the piercing, the instantaneous nature of the quiver, being able to hit multiple targets, paralyzing them, which is great for you and the team, pretty good range, decent armor, a wide spectrum of UTs to play around with. The archer is my favorite class in the game, both in terms of personal playstyle and overall effectiveness. So those are my new favorite classes in Realm of the Mad God. Feel free to let me know what your favorites are, but also, if you want to see another type of video like this in the future, let me know if you have any ideas. I know that ranking my favorite dungeons from least to greatest is 
probably the most popular one you could pick, and I definitely have plans for that in the future. Not quite yet, that definitely requires some more preparation to gather all the footage. But anything else in the meantime, if you want, let me know, I'll see what I can do. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.